Hello and welcome to this uh, second part of our introduction to Unreal Engine 4. Uh, in the video we're going to look at how to import, how to create collisions, custom collisions, how to create LODs, and also how to create a light map for your object. So uh, let's get started. Hello. Um, so in the last video we looked at the basic UI of um, the, there we go, that's better, the basic UI of Unreal Engine 4, where the content browser is, where the outliner is, um, how to navigate, how to play. Um, I don't know whether we covered how to build lighting, um, but we'll do that in the, in, in the lighting video that I'm going to do um, about it. Um, so yeah. We should already have a scene that we've created using the uh, first person template. Um, and that should be should be already on. Um, I'm also gonna show you how to import textures as well in this video, so that in the next video, we're gonna look at shaders and how to create your own materials, material setups and that. So yeah, so uh, let's get started on this. Um, so to begin with, uh, I'm gonna include these, these assets for the patrons. Um, so that you can use these assets to kind of test things. And I've got two assets. I've got um, this prop, which we're going to do some LODs for. And I've also got this desk as well. Um, and the reason why I'm using this desk, it's from uh, Cenotaph. And the reason why I'm using it is because I want to create some custom collision that leaves this hole out. Because if we just use Unreal Standard Collision, um, which is just a box collision, um, this would actually cover this hole and maybe you want the character to crawl under here and look for stuff um, so for like like doorways and that sort of stuff you would you would need to necessarily you would need to make your own custom collision for that so I'll show you how you do it um, so let's start with the camera first um, actually let's start with the desk so if I export this now now one of the things that I've done is that I've moved the pivot now the reason why I've moved the pivot is because I want the pivot to be exported in this position so when it comes inside of Unreal, it's down in this corner. If it was, say, center, you would have to then make sure the pivot is at the center of the world here. Uh, and the problem with this is that it's very hard to kind of snap it. So if we have it in the bottom corner, it's going to be quite easy to snap onto grid. And now one of the things I did forget to mention in the last video, because I was just doing it all about Unreal, is that we do need to set up this grid. So if we just go to display, and go to um, the little square here. Now you can see that my length and width is a thousand, my grid lines are every hundred, and subdivision is ten. And if you click apply, that will apply it. Now the reason why these this is the value is that it will snap to um, it, it snaps to Unreal. So one Unreal unit equals one centimeter, if I remember rightly. Um, so making sure that in your settings down here, so the little cog that's chasing the man, if you go to settings. Uh, you'll see um, my working units are set to centimeters and degree. Now, you could set this scene up to be um, world coordinates where Z is up instead of Y, because in Unreal, Z is up. Um, I don't do that because sometimes if you change back and you forget to, and then it screws it all up. So I, I just keep it the same. I, I'm so used to it now that I don't need to change that. Um, okay, so I've got my desk and I've moved my pivot and if you press D that will allow you to move the pivot anywhere And if you hold V that snaps it to a vert or you could snap it to the grid as well I'm gonna snap it to the vert in this bottom corner And I'm just gonna press W and then it resets itself or you just press D and it resets itself So that's that now. This is already clean because it, this, I've already exported this but you would sometimes have history here so you need to make sure that you delete the history. Now, up here in my toolbar, I've got all the tools that I use on export. So if we go here, we go to edit, delete by type and history. That's gonna delete the history if you've got any. And if you want to put these buttons up here, um, I think I do mention it in my introduction to Maya video, which is on this channel. So go check it out. But if you press control shift and then click the button, click a tool here it actually creates the tool inside of here so that was control shift left click and it will create it so i'm going to delete the history freeze the transformations um it just helps when you import it it doesn't bring in any information that you don't want 
Now we don't need to center it, so we're just going to export it. So file, export selection. And for this demo, I'm just going to actually put it on my desktop. So I'm going to pull, call this desk. Um, now, one thing I do need to have a look at is this here. So what you want selected is smoothing groups, because if you've got any softened normals, uh, you'll want those to be exported. Tangent binormals, smooth mesh. Uh, yeah. I'm going to untick animation because there's no animation involved. And I'm going to have a look at cameras, untick cameras, untick lights, untick audio. That's fine. That's fine. And then on the advanced options, I'm just going to look at the units. That's fine. And I'm also going to look at the FBX file format. Now, what you want to do is always use ASCII. Binary is a little bit more temperamental, so ASCII is a lot more thingy. Now, if the FBX doesn't work, you can revert back to an old FBX launcher. So like 2013 is quite a good one. I'm going to try 2020 because I haven't tried it yet. So let's let's see. And then I'm just going to click export. Now, what that's done is it's exported an FBX. So you need to make sure that you export as FBX. Um, you can't really use OBJ because it doesn't. If you've got animation stuff, it doesn't really it doesn't work basically. So you need to make sure that you're importing into Unreal with FBX. Now, um, one thing as well with with Unreal is targets. Targers are the best things to use. Uh, one, because you can have an alpha channel in there, 32-bit targer. Um, but also JPEGs are, you can lose, um, not value, but you can lose detail because of compression. Um, so targers, tar TGA files are the best for Unreal uh, for that. I think you can use PNG. I know you can use PN PNG in um, Unity. Um, not too sure about Unreal, I'd have to give it a go. But anyway, so we've got that and it's exported. So you'll see uh, now on my desktop, if I close all these files down, I've got my now FBX. So what I'm gonna do is, there's two things. Firstly, I'm just gonna create a folder. So I'm gonna call this a uh, new folder. And I'm gonna call it um, UE4. So you can't have spaces, demo. And then within this, I'm just gonna, so how I did that was actually go all the way back to your content. And I'm just gonna create a new folder. So I right clicked, create new folder. I'm gonna call this UE4 demo. Um, and then I'm gonna right click again and create a folder called FBX. I'm gonna create another folder called um, materials. And then another folder called textures and it just keeps things organized so it's best best to do this um, if I select the FBX folder and right click I can go import new asset and I'm just going to navigate to my desk now there's a few things we need to do so the first thing is um, you can auto generate collision and I will do that so I can show you what it looks like um, everything else you want to do not create material because you don't want to bring in the textures and the materials from Maya. That's just going to create a lot of mess. So you make sure that's unticked. Untick import textures. Um, this is fine. Now if we click an arrow, it will give us more options. So for example, um, we could... Where is it? Oh, where are you? Ah, generate line map UVs. Now, the thing is, I think this has already got line maps. So if we just go to the um, UV editor, you'll see, yes, there's already a line map. So we don't need to, so Unreal can make its own line maps. It's perfectly fine. Sometimes if you're in a rush or you're doing block outs, it's good to use that. But that's where the option to turn it on and off is here. So if you unclick the little arrow, click the little arrow, and it's tick here. So if you've already got a light map made, untick that because you don't need it. So I'm going to click import all. And there we go. And we have our first object. Now, if you want to see this in scene, we can do by just dragging it and placing it in the scene like so. And if I just rotate it, 
and you'll notice that it's snapping to 10 and 10 on the grid so it snaps to each grid line here and you can see as well because we've put the pivot here it's snapping right nice and flush against the floor which is what we want and the best thing with this as well say I wanted to snap this to a point if I hold V I can do say I wanted to snap it to this corner here it's a little bit fiddly I can do there you go it's snapped so and you can move this around, you can rotate it as well. It'll rotate on the pivot. So for example, a door pivot would need to be where the hinges are. So you would need to import this. Um, if the door was going to open, especially if you're going to use blueprints, you would need to put the pivot on the position, maybe the bottom right corner where it's going to move outwards. Like if that was the door, so the door frame would be here and then the door would open like that. I know the desk. Um, but anyway, so if we double click on here, it's going to bring up our FBX um, viewport. And within here, it gives us our two, two material slots because we've got um, we've got two materials attached to this. So if you say if you wanted three materials, you would have to make sure the materials are made inside a mayor. Uh, like assign the uh, like a fong or a blin or whatever you're using in Maya uh, and then it would come and translate over to here uh, we've also got build settings so we can actually look at like light map resolutions um, now I would change the light map resolutions here so for example 64 might not be enough for this size object so I'm gonna just start with 1 to 8 and that's because the calculation I used inside of Maya to calculate this is 128. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Now there's no LODs on this one because we don't really need it. It's 10,000 tries, which we, we could LOD it um, if need be late, at a later stage, but for now it's fine. Um, and if we go to UV channel, you'll see this is your light map. And this is the UV sheet because there's two materials that's why things are overlapping on each other uh, now if I want to see the collision you'll see that it's created some very simple collision now this could be just fine for this object it's quite square but say you wanted to create the collision um, and you wanted to crawl inside of here which you can't unless you've got a crawl mechanic but maybe that's the case or it's a door frame so I'm going to create some collision inside of uh, Maya and this is using something called UCX Collision. And I'll put a link in the description uh, of the technical documentation from Unreal, 4, uh, Unreal Engine 4's um, tech doc. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to create some collisions. So I'm just going to create a square. And I'm just going to move the pivot so I can snap it to this corner here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab these vertices. And I'm holding V to do this. And I'm just snapping them. Okay. If that ever happens, it's because preserve UVs is on. <laughs> okay, and then if I grab that. Now you have to make sure that you get the whole thing in this box. So that's the first box. Um, now what I'm gonna call this is, the, the actual collision bit, I'm gonna call it a special name because when it gets imported into the engine, it doesn't render, it just renders the collision. So if I go UCX underscore, copy the name of the object, underscore zero zero. And that, that means it's the first piece of geometry for this, because we're gonna have multiple of these collisions. Now with that in case, I'm just gonna duplicate this and you'll see now it's zero one. I'm gonna do the same up here as well. So let's, I'm just going to reshape this. And I'm going to do that. Okay. So we've now got our collision. And, oh, wait a minute. I need to do one more. 
because this doesn't have any collisions. So if you were to shoot this, uh, yeah, the bullets would go through it. Be interesting, to say the least. And I'm just holding V to stack. Just gonna scale it. Probably best if I do that. And if I grab these top bits, there we go. So I've got my, and all I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna move all the pivots into the corner here for all the collision so that I know it's there basically. And then what I'm going to do is select that, select that, and I'm going to go freeze transformation. I'm going to export it. Now, one of the good things with Unreal is that I can re-import this. Um, so if I go right click, re-import, it's just going to re-import it, which is brilliant because it's like, yeah, it's done. So if I double click on this now, hopefully, you can see my custom collision has come in. And there you go. And now this means if I was to play this, I'm just gonna turn the sound down because I think I, last week I could actually hear it on the recordings. Where's the volume mixer? Ow. Where are you? Oh, that's better. Anyway. So if I was to shoot the balls, they actually go into that gap. Now, if, if it just had the square, it would just bounce off it. Um, that's not expensive. Um, Polyper collision is very is an expensive collision tool. Um, but yeah, for this, that's, that's brilliant because it's like, okay, that's a couple of squares and it's not rendering the squares. If you see the squares, it means that you haven't done the prefix right. So it's definitely make sure you put it as UCX underscore the name of the object underscore zero zero and then copy from that box basically and then that will allow you to kind of have the right naming convention there but if not it's like zero one zero two zero three zero four zero five and this works for door frames as well it works for a lot of things so unreal's collision is good for like simple geometry or maybe box geometry but for this you need to make your own basically or i find it easier to make your own um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to have a look at the light map um, because yeah so I'm just going to hide this and we're going to I'm just going to open up the UV editor now this first map here I'm going to delete this so we can start fresh now this has got two materials on it which is fine we've got the hinges and then we've got the, the actual desk but the whole object is one combined object so it needs to share its, its own light map Say for example, you had chairs also combined, they would need their own light maps. Uh, they, you, you would combine them all together and then they would share one light map. If they're individual assets, they have their own light maps. So for this one, I need to actually create this. So to create it, go to, go to this button here in your UV editor and click these squares. And I'm going to call this light map. You don't need to. You could keep it as a UV set, or you could keep it as um, what's whatever, whatever you want. Really, you can name this whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't pick up that it's a light map. How it picks it up as a light map is because you've told it in Unreal in the options that the UV channel one is a light map. And I'll show you that option in a minute, just in case it it does screw up. So I'm going to click apply. Now what that's done is it's copied these UV shells onto a new light map. So when we do the layout, so I'm just gonna go to hold shift, left click layout. Uh, and if I go to legacy, I can set this to one, two, eight. Now there's something we need to do before we do that and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but if I click apply now, you can see that it's only affected this UV channel. It's not affected the actual texture one so make sure you do it on the correct layer or else you're going to screw up make sure you save i'm just going to press ctrl z a minute just minimize that 
Now, if you go to, um, I always forget where this is. So under view and go to grid, we're going to need to put in a calculation. Now the calculation is 128 div one divided by 128. So I'll say that again, one divided by 128. Now this is the calculation for a 128 line map. You could do one divided by 64, one divided by 32, one divided by 256 and one divided by 512. As long as you kind of set this up, it's gonna mean that each little um, piece on the grid is a pixel wide. And between the different shells, you're gonna need two pixels, okay? If you don't have two pixels apart, which when we do the automatic layout, it does it, never used to, but it does now, um, it will mean that it puts it at least two pixels away. And that's what we need for the calculation. So the calculation is one divided by one to eight, which if we input, so if I just reset this, click apply, 0 0.0078125. Okay, now don't press enter. You need to click apply. And there you go. Now, if, if I just grab a calculator and do that. Now, I'm not good at maths. That's just me remembering that number. So one divided by one, two, eight equals 0 0.0078125. Make sure you put that whole number in and don't click enter, just click apply and then it will apply it. So now this is ready. Now. Majority of the time this works 99% of the time you might get the odd few occasions where it doesn't then that could be that you need to re-import your mesh back in fresh So delete the mesh re-import it back in and it tends to work That glitch happens if say you brought the mesh in and you haven't already got a light map on it I don't know why it still happens for me, but anyway, so um, If I go to layout and make sure it's set to legacy. Now I normally use Unfold 3D, but legacy is the best one for this because you can actually say, okay, I'm gonna set this to a one to eight map. Click apply and close. So now each one of these is at least two pixels apart from each other, which is what we want. Uh, so freeze, and I'm just gonna export this again. Make sure I've got my collision set up and export it. Now the collision doesn't need to be UV'd, so don't worry about that. Again, I'm just gonna not do that. I'm just gonna re-import, there you go. Nothing will change because I already had this map, but it means that you, your UV channel one is your light map. And if we look at, um, oh, where is it now? Where are you? Okay, look at log one. Uh, you'll notice that um, destination of the light map is number one. Say for example, it's in the second slot. You put two here, three, four, example, yeah. So I am telling that the, the light map for the light build is in channel one, basically, and there you go. And that's that's light maps for you. Um, you have to do them if, if for example, you're doing um, stat, uh, static light builds because what it does is it bakes the shadow into the light map. So for example, we will do a light bake now. So this is set to static, so um, allows baked lighting, the fastest for rendering. So not everything in your scene will be dynamic, not everything moves. For example, if this table flipped up, it would be classed as dynamic um, because you don't, it, I'll show you, it's better to show you. So if I just go to build, and go to uh, previews fine. Let's just build. If you're at un if you're on like university computers, sometimes that causes an issue because of the um, admin uh, rights. Well, this shouldn't take too long because there's not a lot in the scene. He says. I am gonna, no, my fan is already on. Um, I do apologize in the sound recording about the fans, but there's nothing I can really do um, about that. Also the street outside. 
great. It's a little bit hot, so I've got my windows slightly open. Come on, 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 come on. There you go. And you'll notice now that it's baked the light in. Now, we have got a slight problem, and that is because the light map resolution on this isn't the greatest. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually, we can actually look at this and go, um, where is it now? Uh, where are you? Light map density. Now, at the moment, blue, ignore the red, because the red, there's nothing we can do about that on, on the handles. Um, but at the moment, this is blue, which means it doesn't have enough resolution. So if we go like two, five, six, you'll notice down that most of it is green. So that's, that's fine. So um, on there, so you can look at that through your here and it's called optimization viewports and you can type in light map density and change it. Uh, the other thing is if we move this now, you'll see the shadow is baked into the floor. So if this did move, if it flipped over or anything like that, you couldn't bake the light in basically. That's what I was trying to get at. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a look at some auto lighting um, on things, so that's fine. So let's uh, let's go back to Maya. And I'm just gonna hide these and bring out the camera. Now the best thing for this, again, let's just create a light map as well. Do a layout on it, there we go. Um, now, for this, at the moment, it's 15,000 polys, but it's a prop that you pick up, so it, it's fine to be around that. Um, it could be optimized a little bit more, but I'm happy with what it is. I'm just going to make a duplicate, so I've always got the original. I've got an original in another file anyway, So, but yeah, just so you don't destroy it. Um, and if you go to edit, I'm going to call this uh, mesh. Go, and I'm going to select it. And I'm just going to history freeze all that jazz center. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go to generate LOD meshes. And if I click the square, it's going to let me change this. And what this is based off is it's based off percentage. So the first lot, it's reduced by 30%. Second lot is reduced by 50%. And the third lot is reduced by 80%. I'm going to click generate. And now what that's done is it's created me a set of LODs. So the first LOD is at 15,000 polys. The second LOD is 10,000. Sorry, the third LOD is 7,000. And the final LOD is 2,000. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to go history, freeze, um, export. And I'm just going to click camera. And I'm going to bring it into the side here. Fingers crossed this works. Okay. So we're going to auto generate collision because we don't need that. Everything else is fine. There's no materials. I'm going to double click on this. Don't think it's brought it in right, so let's 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 explore that. Okay, so export selection. Let's tick animation back on just in case. I think it's something inside the Unreal um, importer. Now the issue we've got is I'm just going to delete it. I want to bring it in fresh. Uh, let's try this again. I forgot to tick that. And hopefully this works. There you go. Can you see it? It's actually changing. So we've got 15,000, 7,000, 2,000. 
and there you go there's the there's the LOD working LOD 1, LOD 2, LOD 3 there's no difference between LOD 0 and 1 which I like actually Unreal's recognized that and it's like no it doesn't need it so there we go that's cool um, just say the number of LODs um, and in the next video I'm going to show you how to set up the material for this so that we can actually put it on and then we're going to do some lighting and rendering in the video after that um, so yeah I think that wraps up this video um, so I've shown import I've shown UCX collision I've shown light map and I've also shown uh, lodding as well inside uh, here let me just pop this in here it's a little bit too big it's way too big so I could take this back into um, actually what I can do is this so I can actually set both of these objects and go file and I can go export selected and this is going to be desk dash camera do apologize about the train <laughs> oh we're having everything this morning uh, that's fine that's fine uh, yeah that's fine export and I can actually bring this back in so if we just create a new scene Oh, I should have saved that for you guys. Never mind. I will, I will set one up and save it for you. Um, so let me just bring this back in. So file import uh, desktop. So it's imported the um, UCX. Uh, So this is probably not the best way to do props, but for example, say you've got like a, uh, when I did the football stadium, this was a really useful tool because I would bring it back in um, and then I would um, like make sure, say I had some light bleeding with edges not meeting each other, I would then like kind of fix it and then export it and then it would work perfectly in engine. So this was a really good way of thinking, but yeah. So we can, I would always recommend changing the prop size inside of Maya so that you've got reference. And the thing when you bring it back in, it's already triangulated because it's already been through the uh, game engine. So, yeah, unfortunately, that's not the best way to do it. Okay. Uh, let's not save that one. Um, I will set the scene up and I will make this available for people on Patreon um, so that you can play around with this and have a look at it. Uh, but, yeah. Um, one thing I do want to do is I do want to thank um, these uh, lovely patrons for, for supporting us. Um, all the money that we receive from Patreon, we put back into making new videos. Also, um, we also um, invest in our software as well. Um, so, yeah, it really does, does help. And uh, thank you very much. Um, so all that's left to do is say that in the next video, we're going to look at shaders and materials. Um, and yeah thank you thank you for watching if you do if you if you like these videos give them a thumbs up um it does help us um and follow the channel and like i said i've been doing live streams every week um on actually building some of these assets um so you can see my whole workflow from building it uv and it texturing it and putting it into engine so i will see you all in the next video bye